Good afternoon, y'all. I'm Marlene Bush, and this channel is called Stitching by the Lake. I am in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and I'm going to talk about cross stitch today. Today is Sunday, June the 27th. This month is almost over. It is a partly cloudy, sunny day here, high humidity, which is normal, and pretty high temperatures in the upper 80s, I think, probably right now. Um, it's actually just barely into the afternoon. I'm still in my Sunday go to meeting clothes, what I call them, uh, because we did go to Sunday school and church this morning, and I'm going to a funeral a little bit later this afternoon for a, one of my high school classmates who passed away a couple of weeks ago, and uh, so we'll be going outside. It's a graveside service into the heat. I hope that this breeze continues because we've got a nice nice breeze going on right now. I've got several FFOs. I've got, I think, one FO. I've got some whips to show you. Um, at the end, I'm going to show you a little quilted table runner that I made several years ago that is so easy, and you don't need a pattern for it. Um, if you are, I know, you know, there's been so many cross stitchers who've kind of started getting into quilting, which makes my heart happy. I quilted for many years, at least 20, if not more. I don't do it uh, much anymore because um, I have some issues with my hands, but, but I love it. I love quilts. I have made quilts and given them to every member of my family. I have many left here. Um, they are a comfort to me. My mom and both my grandmothers quilted. So I thought I would show you this because if you if you are at all interested in kind of looking at quilting, this would be a great start for anybody that can use a sewing machine. Actually, you could do it by hand, but uh, I did this one by machine. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, so let me see. What else do I want to talk about? Gardens? Mm, not so much. Mine, mine is horrible. I only have a little one. Um... Thank goodness, because it's horrible. The um, zucchini blooms and the blooms fall off. I had, oh, a dozen or so tomatoes on my vines, and they have disappeared. Uh, I believe that it's raccoons. I think I told you all that last time. I, the only thing that has done well for me was garlic. I planted garlic last October. I planted 39. I just bought organic garlic at the grocery store, pulled it apart, and planted the little garlic pods, and all 39 of them came up. Now, not all 39 of them made great big garlics, but many of them did. So I harvested those a couple of weeks ago, left them out to dry, uh, as they say to do, and then brushed off the dirt and cut off the stalks and brought them in. So here's here's my dilemma with the garlic. How do y'all store it? I, I'm i not finding a good way to store it. I have it in a mesh bag, and I put that in the pantry, but when I open the pantry door, I smell garlic, and I don't want that. So, suggestions, anybody? What do you do with, I gave away two, so I've got at least 30 good size heads of garlic left. I really, I talked about this last time. I, I thought I would go in and slice it or chop it or whatever, freeze it, dehydrate it, but I don't really want to do that right now. I just, I just want to hold on to it for a little bit. And so, um, tell me about storing garlic. How do you do that? Okay, um, what else do I want to talk about? Um, this. I want to talk about project bags. Y'all know I've made project bags for a long time. I love the vinyl front project bags, but I stink at making them. I have tried everybody's tutorial. I just don't do well working with vinyl. But I can make beautiful project bags all day long. This project bag is not one that I made. It's one that I bought and I'm sorry, but I don't remember who I bought it from. But the problem that I have with these, with the zipper on the front, is this issue right here. This was not on here when I bought it. 
unless you attach something here or pin something on here, you can't tell without unzipping this what's in it. So I took this one and did a little experiment. I cut a piece of vinyl. I opened this zipper up and I sewed a, a vinyl pocket right here. This is half of an index card where I wrote the name of my project. I will be doing this on every project bag that I have or that I will be making because this solves my issue. I just flip through my project bags and there's the name of it right there. So, easy, easy. I started out trying to maybe put a little piece of ribbon around this, but honestly, the stitching is nearly invisible and I was able to do it on my machine. So that's probably all I'm going to do from this point on. But I, I really like this. I really like this. Even if I did think it up myself. Or I think I did. I haven't seen anybody else do that. Okay. Let's talk about FFOs. Because I'm really excited. Y'all know I've been working really hard to try to get all of my FOs actually finished. And I had some that went back a couple of years, or maybe even three. I don't remember. This is one of them. Reindeer, reindeer feed sack I finished at least two years ago. Well, let me see what I finished that because I put it on here. Nope, I didn't put a date on this one. Anyway, I've seen this finished this way many times, and I love it. It's so cute. So cute. But... I have several little bags like this, and I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it. And I know it said sack on the pattern, but I decided to frame it. So that's what I did. This is my reindeer feed. It's by Carriage House Sampling, you saw that just now, and I stitched this on Wix Style Works Gingham. I want to say that's a 28 count, and I, I'm pretty sure I use the call for colors. I don't have that information. It's on one of my older calendars, and I didn't go look it up. This frame is kind of a cherry wood. It's fake. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's fake. It doesn't weigh much at all, um, and I think I got this, I don't know, at a thrift shop, maybe. It was one of those that was uh, for a photograph. And it had the little stand on the back. I just pulled that stand off, and um, I will either I will either have to put this on an easel, or I will put a hanger at the top of it. This is the back. It does not have a hanger up here because it only had that stand. And that's just uh, paper that I glue onto the back of my framed pieces. Didn't it turn out cute? I really like it. I also finished, I am doing the um, hashtag cross stitch camp with Sherry at Colorado Cross Stitcher. And my choice for this month was red, white, and bloom. And I wanted to do Uncle Sam. She asked what inspired us, and frankly, it's this picture that inspired me. I think that is just adorable. I would like to stitch every one of those. I would love to have those letters. I looked at Hobby Lobby. I didn't find anything similar. I don't know if she says on here where she got those or not. Oh, yeah, she said Hobby Lobby. Well, I didn't find them, so I'll continue to look because she said they're paper mache, so... I'll continue to look there. I finished that one. Um, let's see. It is on a 28 count fabric that was in my stash. I have no idea what it is. Maybe white chocolate, but I'm not positive about that. And I think he's adorable. I used Lady.Creates Chenille. Around the outside, I used... A red and white ticking on the back. This chenille is glued on. 
I do the minimum amount of hand stitching that I can. Again, because of my hands, I don't have real good uh, use of this middle finger and you have to have that to manipulate a needle other than stab stitching. If you're doing the sewing method, you need that finger. Um, so, this is my cross stitch camp finish. And he is going out with the rest of my patriotic things. Uh, in a, I put mine in a toolbox, a long wooden toolbox on my coffee table. I also started and finished the July mini sampler. I've already passed this pattern on, so this is my working copy. It's by From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. There's a whole series of these. Jen at the stitching, Jen's Stitching Niche showed these some time ago. She's been doing all of them. So I bought several. I didn't buy them all, but I did buy this one. And I decided to finish that in a pillow also. And this is not upside down. This is how I chose to finish it. I um, used just a little strip of a navy blue. You, I don't know if you can tell it or not. You'll see it on, no, you won't see it either. Uh, a strip of navy, some red and white ticking, and navy pom-poms, again, by Lady Dot Creates. I used the colors that were called for. I do kind of wish I had darkened this, and I did make one change. This was a star, and I chose to put a cross. Uh, because our country was founded on Christian principles, so I thought that would be appropriate. I loved the fireworks. We heard fireworks last night late. We all, we hear we had a lot of fireworks here on the lake. Um, so it will get worse over the next week or two until Independence Day happens on the 4th of July. Let's see. This one... I don't know the name of this, I don't know the designer, I don't remember, but it is one that I did, um, that I stitched years ago, five years ago maybe, um, and I put it onto a project bag, on the front of a project bag, and then I used that project all the time, and one day spilled some water on it. These are over dyed threads. There was more to this pattern but the dark purple that was farther out bled I, I lived with it for a while but then I decided I didn't want to do that anymore so I took it off cut the project bag apart and just finished this into a pillow I used wool on the back this is wool from a marine blanket uh, probably from the Vietnam era that a friend gave to me. I have shared parts of that uh, with a couple of other people. And so he's going to be perfect to put out uh, in the spring and at Easter. Okay, what is next? That's all my FFOs. I think so. One, two, three, four, five. I had five of those. But I do have an FFO. Several years ago, a couple of years ago, three years ago, Holly and Anita, if you haven't seen their YouTubes, they used to make YouTube videos all the time. They took a break, um, had some job changes and stuff like that, but they have just a couple of weeks ago made a new one. So if you've not seen them in a while or if you've never seen them, go watch them because they are so full of joy. They make my heart smile. Um, Holly and Anita and Daylene from So Grateful. They are the most joyful people, and they just make my heart smile. Anyway, Holly and Anita had bought this pattern, and were stitching it. And I'm pretty sure one of them finished it, but I don't know if both did or not. I just loved it. I started it in Mania of 20, so a year ago. And I finished the stitching last night. Let me see if you can see this. The light's not great because of the clouds today. This is on 30 count putty. Weak Style Works fabric. 
I use the Kalfar colors with one exception, and that is this brown. It called for Wood Trail, and I used a DMC color, and I made one change. There were two more rows on the bottom of the little pedestal that the bird sits on, which I left off. I thought it was a little too tall. I love the patchwork look on the bird. Loved that. I don't know how I'm going to finish that. I think I'm going to try to frame it. I think I'm going to try to frame that. I don't know. All right. That's all the work that I've done. Oh, no, it's not. I forgot one. I showed you this last time. Um, this is Happy Birthday, America by Brenda Gervais, and I think I showed you that I had finished stitching it. This pattern, Brenda gives the most wonderful, wonderful directions for finishing. However, I passed the pattern on without reading the directions. So I have done this twice. I wasn't happy the first time. I'm not greatly happy this time, but it's going to stay like this because I am not doing it again. It's on this little pedestal. You, this came with a kit that I got, and I painted it. It came with the pom-pom trim only. She took the banding off of hers. I, I kind of liked the banding. I First of all, I hadn't learned how to do that, but take it off. But I kind of liked it um, like that, so I'm leaving it. Anyway, he's cute. Another patriotic one going out to my coffee table. I have a sweet friend named Linda who sent me, and you all may have already seen this, because Brenda and Laura, Brenda and the Serial Starter, showed this on their last video. Linda is a history lover, and she is trying to preserve some of the old samplers, so she is charting some out of museums. This one, she sent it to me because it came from the Historic Arkansas Museum. And if you saw it on Brenda and Laura's video, you'll remember it because of all the purple. This came from, um, what does it say? Sweet Home Sampler. Sweet Home is a community right outside of Little Rock. It's been there, I guess, forever. Um, let me see. Mary Whetstone stitched it in 1863. She calls it a township in Arkansas, but it, it really is, I don't know what a township is or what that means, but it's a little bit southeast of Little Rock. Um, and nobody knows if Mary actually lived in Sweet Home because they don't have any records of that or if she had family there. I don't know. But she obviously recorded um, all of the things that she loved. And y'all, she stitched this on a, a cotton ticking, which is kind of a thick fabric if I'm not mistaken. And she used bright wool threads like you would use in cruel embroidery. Now Linda has charted it of course for linen or Ada and she used lakeside sand dune to stitch hers on and Weeks Dyeworks straw I believe was the other one that she said was closest to it. Um, this chart is, if you stitched it on 28 count, would be 21 by 21 approximately. If you stitched it on 40 count, it would be mm, a little under 15 by 15. I love it. And she mentions that the border is inconsistent, so you would really need to count. I'm glad she gave us that warning. Many times children who stitched borders... Um, that would be the case, that you really need to be careful and watch that. So I'm thrilled to have that because it's from Arkansas and because Linda 
got it um, enough to send it to me. That, so thanks, Linda. Now whips. Let's talk about a couple of whips. Back. I don't remember when I started this. Before Easter, I started from Black Sheep Redo this bunny right here. And I finished pretty quickly the flower and the dots on the bunny, but not the bunny. Because that's fill-in stitching. And so I worked on this a little bit this month. Um, I'm still filling it. Everything that's left is this brown that I'm filling in here. It is mindless stitching. So I take this with me when I travel. Um which is not very often, which is why that bunny has not been done yet. We did go to Branson a couple of weeks ago. Um, had a wonderful time. We stayed three nights. We uh, typically stay and did this time at an older hotel that's out of town a little ways. Still run by the same family that I think that started it originally. Doesn't have all the big nice amenities that some of the bigger hotels have, but it is quiet. Um, it's almost like going to a bed and breakfast, but not quite because it's more, more like a hotel. But anyway, we did. We uh, went to one show. We went to see to the Sight and Sound Theater to see Jesus, which was magnificent. I met a friend there, um, Judy is a quilter. That's I met when I met her. She was a quilter, and when I say met her, I mean online meeting. We have corresponded. We talked about how long I have followed her blog, Patchwork Times. Over twenty years, I think. She also is a wonderful knitter. She enjoys things that I enjoy, but don't do. She does. A massive amount of canning and gardening and dehydrating and um, those kinds of things and I love watching those videos and reading blogs when she talks about that um, but when I she's she lived in Missouri for a while then she moved to Texas and now she's back in Missouri so when I knew I was going to Branson I contacted her and said you know could we finally meet like face to face in person and we did she and her husband met Jerry and I for breakfast, a late breakfast, and then uh, we sent the guys off to wander around for a couple hours, and we went to Cecilia's, and then we went to Quilts and Quilts, and had just a wonderful visit, just, it, it was just, it, it was good for me, for my, for my heart, that was good for my heart, uh, so I hope we get to do that again in the future. Um, and while I'm talking about that trip, I did buy something I haven't done in a while. I used to do wool applique all the time. I love it. I still have many pieces, but I haven't done any in a while because, like I told you before, that's, that sewing stitch is very difficult for me. But I loved this so much that I want to give it a shot. And this is... This one is just on fabric, but it's wool letters, and I'm going to do it this way so it'll go on my table. And in the middle, you put a circle, like this brown circle of wool. And then these are interchangeable. They had a dozen or more little patterns that you could add to that. This comes with three. It comes with the bird, the snowman in the house, and the little patriotic one down here. Those are the three that come in here. And I added to that this one, because y'all know I was an educator, my husband was an educator, all my kids are educators, so we're big school people. And then I saw this turkey. Is he not the cutest thing? Just so cute. If you are not familiar with Cricket Street wool, um, this one is a buttermilk basin. This one is Cricket Street wool. Um, Carolyn Snyder is the owner of 
Cricket Street Wool, and she is based in Branson, actually Branson West. And my sister and I went out. She has her shop, if you will, in her home. And that's where she designs and where she makes up her kits and all that kind of stuff. And my sister and I went out there a couple of years ago. We, you have to make an appointment to do that. And she has, she was, has been ill. I don't know if she's open at all now. But she evidently is still producing because of what I see at the shop. But her wool is absolutely beautiful. She had a long, narrow room with shelves all the way down on both sides, and they were full of wool cuts and Valdani threads. And, oh, my goodness, just make you drool. It was so beautiful when we were there. I would love to do that again. I have one more whip that I have worked on, and that is my Blackbird Designs for Brenda and Laura's Blackbird Weekend, and I'm working on coming to my garden. Y'all, I went through my Blackbird Designs patterns this week and my Brenda Gervais. I've started a new um, way of listing my patterns. And I, you know, I'd love to say I'm embarrassed at how many I have. I'm not, but I should be. I don't care. I, I love them. I just love them. I had only done the border last time I showed this, and all I've added this time is this piece right here. And actually, I added it twice because I did it wrong and had to completely take it out and redo it. So I'm hoping next weekend, when it is the first weekend of the month, and it's the 4th of July, Independence Day for America, um, I'm hoping to get a little bit more than that done, unless, unless I decide to, uh, on a new start, because, oh, there's so many blackbirds, and I have so many patterns, and I need, they all need to be started, right? <laughs> Okay, I'm almost through. Before I do the little quilt mini tutorial, I want to do last video's giveaways. I offered up two, one magazine, one book. This one is called Home Heart Cross Stitch. And the winner of this one is Jen... Thread by Thread 06. Jen, I'm going to put my email address in the box below. If you will email me, I will get that into the mail to you. And the other one that I offered was this magazine, 365 Cross Stitch Designs. And the winner of this one is Peggy Ramirez. Peggy, email me and let me have your mail address. I have a new, two new giveaways. I won these two patterns at StitchCon year before last. And I've looked at them and looked at them. I love them. They're so pretty, but I don't, I have so many blackbirds. <laughs> I won't get those all stitched. So I'm gonna give away these two. They came in this package, the patterns only. They are by Telen Emblem. Um, and if you are interested in these two patterns, let me get a little closer. There's the first one, and here's the second one. Um, if you will use flowers in your comment. Flowers. And then once again... I bought the same pattern twice because I loved it so much. I don't need it two times, so I'm going to give away Our Hearts by Brenda Gervais. Oh, this is one of the prettiest ones ever. If you're interested in this one, use the word heart in your comment. Okay. Now, let's talk about this little quilt. Now I'm going to tell y'all right front, this has been on my table for a couple of weeks. So 
if it's got a little spot on it or something, sorry. It's also at least, I don't know, seven or eight years old. So it is a bit faded, although you may not even be able to tell that. This little quilt is so simple to make. So simple. So here's what you do. Let me get my little measuring thing out here. These stripes you cut two and a quarter inches wide. Two and a quarter inches wide. There are one, two, three red ones. Oh, no, wait. The short. Yeah, they're all, they're all the same. Two and a quarter inches wide, and there are three reds and two whites. The length of them can actually be anything you want it to be for however long you need it to be for your table or wherever you're going to put it. But for my purposes, let's see, I cut these about 19 inches. So two and a quarter, you could cut them two and a half by 19 or 20. That's what I did. Sew those together. Then measure, once you've ironed it, measure this width and cut a piece of a navy blue background that width so that it fits right here with this. I made mine nine inches. Cut it nine inches. Whatever this width is, by nine inches across. And you sew that on and press it. And then you cut a narrow border of a different navy, a gingham or something like that. Oh, that's probably about, well, maybe two inches. No, less than two. That one is, cut it one and a half inches wide. And cut enough to make your sashing which is what this is called right here. And then you cut this border. This border is wider, so it is, let's see. Don't y'all love the way I do this? Mm, one, two and a half, cut it about three inches. Cut it about three inches. And it goes all the way around the outside and press. Now, the star. You can do anything you want with this star. This is a five-pointed star. You can pull up on Google Image a five-pointed star and print it off and cut by that. Or you can just draw a five-pointed star and cut by that. You can make it go from here to here like I did. Or you can make it fit right in here if that's what you choose. So, you cut a white one, then you cut just a little bit smaller a navy one, and a little bit smaller a red one. Now, I ironed some Wonder Under or something like that on the back of those and ironed those down. I did not do anything except stitch around each one of these with a straight stitch. Each one. Now, you could do exactly what I did. I left them to kind of ravel when it was washed. But you could turn those under, edges under, if you chose to do that, if you wanted a more finished piece. You could turn the edges under and stitch them down like that. And then, for the quilting, I simply did a wavy stitch all the way down the stripes and all the way down the border. And I don't know that you can see it on the back, but I did stitch, you can see where the star is stitched around maybe a little bit. And I, then I put a binding on it. Now y'all, if you aren't, if you don't know how to put on a binding, or you don't want to put on a binding, before you ever put your backing on, and I use the same as I did on the border, you can make this just like you make your little pin pillows. By sewing it around, leaving a hole, and turning it and just stitching it flat around this hole outside. 
this is one of those things that you don't stress over. It's primitive. It's all American. It could be any other country. Use different colors. Um, if you're from Canada, you could put a maple leaf right here. Use whatever colors, whatever symbol you might want to use. I love this. I've made a half a dozen and given them away. They don't take long to make. Once you make the first one, you can make the next one, oh, in an hour, an hour and a half. The cutting takes the longest. And again, when you're cutting, it doesn't matter if you cut them two inches wide or two and a half inches wide. It doesn't matter. Just um, do what feels right to you. It's a lot of fun to make. I hope you try it. Please tell me if you do. I'd love to know that. Um, today has been such a good day, such a beautiful day for us here. I hope it is for you as well. I hope that you enjoy your Sunday and that your upcoming week is a wonderful one and that you get to do lots of stitching. Bye-bye.